Sebastião Salgado is a Brazilian social documentary photographer and photojournalist. He is one of the most notable photojournalists of the planet. Sebastião sacrificed everything to become a photographer. He chose a specific photography genre that was important to him and his entire life has been related to it in recent years. Salgado speaks about what he does as follows. Many say that I am a photojournalist, photoanthropologist, photoactivist. But it is more than that. Photography became my life. I lived for photography and was involved in very long-term projects. This is what separates Sebastião Salgado from other photographers. He carefully chose a subject and worked on it for years, which resulted in books, exhibitions, shows and presentations. Owing to Salgado's photography works, the global community changes its attitude regarding that subject or topic. Salgado has traveled to over 100 countries to accumulate materials for his photographic projects. Apart from numerous publications in the press, many works of his have been featured in books such as Other Americas, Sahel, Workers, Terra, Migrations and Portraits, Africa and Genesis, among many others. Traveling exhibitions of his works attracted a vast number of spectators and are organized worldwide to this day. Sebastião Salgado has received various significant photographic awards in recognition of his accomplishments. Also, he is a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador and Honorary Member of the U.S. Academy of Arts and Sciences. Interview with Sebastião Salgado for the Odessa Photographic Society. Hello, dear Sebastião. Hello, you're from Ukraine. <laughs> How are you? A pleasure to meet you. Yes, we agree. You know, usually we ask our guests to introduce themselves and tell a little bit about themselves. But today I would like to say that we are very happy to communicate with a great master, great artist, a unique person and a photographer which is said to be timeless. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sebastian, it is not secret that you came to photography as an adult and successful person. You were engaged in a completely different activity. Could you tell us how you decided to completely change your life, quit a promising career, good living conditions for the sake of photography? What prompted you to this? As you said, I discovered photography very, very late. Uh, I'm a Brazilian, and we came to France in 1969 in order that, uh, to me, to prepare a PhD in economics. And uh, my wife, uh, that uh, she made the studies of architecture, she bought a camera. And I discovered photography in this moment. And, uh, well, I was 26 years old when, for the first time, I made one, one shot in a camera. And but from this moment, uh, my life changed. Uh, I had the uh, opportunity to materialize in photography what I thought that was important, that I thought that was beautiful, that I thought that was harder, that anything that was possible to me to transform an image. And uh, from this moment, uh, my life changed. I do not uh, start. Uh, my professional career immediately. I finished uh, my studies. I went to work as an economist in an international organization. And uh, I started to do projects with the World Bank in Africa. And uh, I bring these cameras with me. And when, in this moment, we are not living in Paris. I finished my studies in Paris, I went to live in London. And when we came back to London, these pictures gave me much more pleasure than the economic reports that was necessary to do. And in this moment, I take a decision to abandon everything to start my, my life, my career of photographer. And in 1973, I start my, my photographer life. Sebastian, could you remember how many photo projects you have 
implemented during your career at the present moment? Tell us, please, at least a little bit about them. Not, not the main uh, photograph projects. Uh, I worked a few ones. One of them was one uh, body of work that I did in Latin America with the Indians of the mountains of Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Guatemala, Mexico, all these countries. I worked for many years there. And uh, uh, that was my first real body of photography. I work a lot in Africa, a lot, many trips in Africa, not as a project, because uh, I work in a news agency that was first Sigma and after Gamma and after Magnum. And uh, I did many trips doing stories in Africa. In the end, it uh, uh, was possible to me to get uh, uh, a group of photographies that represent Africa. And uh, after I did uh, a quite a big story about uh, starvation, about drought in Africa again. I did with Doctors Out of Borders, Médecins Sans Frontières, that I work about one and a half year, most time in Africa with these doctors in uh, assistance to the, the di distressed people. And uh, the result was one book, was one quite big, large exhibition. After I did uh, a longer term story in, uh, in the end of the first big industrial revolution, a lot of work that we call workers, where uh, was possible in the beginning of the ages to see that the way to produce the planet was completely changing with the arrival of the high tech, the electronic, the computers, the robots and the line of production. And uh, the working class, uh, traditional working class was disappearing. And before that this working class completely disappeared, I gone all over the planet to photograph uh, workers. I came to your country. I work a lot in Zaporozhye, in uh, Zaporozhye style, big, big, big uh, steel industry in, uh, in Zaporozhye. I work uh, another big industry in Ukraine. I work uh, many different posts in Soviet Union. I work in India, I work in Brazil, I work in France, all over the world. I believe that I work about 30 different accounts during the six years uh, to gather this, this story about the end of first industrial revolution. The name of this book that came out on this is Workers, an Archaeology of Industrial Era. And uh, uh, you see, when I tell you that I did these few stories, a really few stories, but uh, they are made for a lot of small stories. For example, Zaparod Stau is one story. But in steel, I work in India, I work uh, in Ukraine, I work in France. Uh, you see, uh, this tree uh, is small story made one medium size story that was part of my big story about the works. I work in many different car factories around the world, in many different situations. You see, during the years, I did only pictures of works. And uh, after this, I did another long story also, that took me about seven years about uh, the migration, about the refugees around the world. The result also was a book. And as the other, this was composed by tens of different stories that I did in Africa, I did in Bosnia, I did in Latin America, in Asia, everywhere around the world. And uh, uh, I did another story, quite a large book that took me eight years called Genesis about uh, environment, about uh, uh, what is pristine in our planet. And uh, I work in 32 different countries. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, you see, my last board of work was open in Paris last week is Amazonia. 
I did uh, seven years shooting Amazonia. I finished the photograph in the end of 2019. And in 2020, with the arrival of the COVID, uh, the coronavirus, was no more possible to travel. And I used this moment to edit all these pictures that I've had photographed in Amazonia during seven years. And the result is a book a little bit bigger than, uh, than Genesis. Genesis, I believe, that's 512 pages. The other has 528 pages. <laughs> and uh, it's a big, big show that opens in Paris last week. And that we stay in here for six months. We'll be open in September in Italy, in October in London. And uh, that's the last part of work. That's the main work that I did in my life. Thank you. Dear yeah, Sebastian, how do you think a photographer should choose the right subject for a project? Can you give some piece of advice, please? No, this there is no advice to do because uh, you see, when I tell you that I did this story about workers, mm -hmm. I'm a former Marxist-Leninist. I, I made the studies of Marxism. I'm a former economist. And when I did workers, working class for me was the most important thing happens in the planet. And uh, when I saw that the working class was changing the, the the appearance, because we continue to have workers, but different workers, that the traditional workers. Now the, the workers, uh, they work in a machine that work for them. They just take care of a machine. And before, the works made the product, produce everything with their hands. And uh, it was completely different. And uh, I went to do a store that were completely concerned with this store. And uh, after, when I was photographing workers, I saw that was happening one thing that we call later globalization. Mm -hmm. That this heavy industry that we have in this north part of the planet, they weren't being displaced for big poor countries as India, as China, as Brazil, as Mexico, as Indonesia. And uh, this was provoking a huge displacement of population in these countries. And uh, with the end of the Cold War, uh, the conflicts that we had all over the planet in Asia, in Africa, was provoking hundreds of millions of refugees displaced the population. And I went to do the story, but we must see when I came to France in 1969, we came as refugees. We are flying from dictatorship in Brazil and we, we stay here till now we are migrants. And when I went to do this story, I went to do a story that I knew quite well. I was very comfortable to do this story that is my story. When we went to photograph uh, Genesis, we have one of the biggest uh, environmental projects in Brazil. We are planting millions of trees. We became so close to the environment that was natural that I went to do uh, environmental project. You see, that's the point. You can do in photography only the stories that we love the stories, that you are completely adapted to them, that you feel comfortable to do them. To impose you a story, that, well, I do a story about, uh, I don't know, urbanization of Odessa. If you are not an urbanist, if you don't love the organization of urban space, you cannot do this. You can go there for two weeks or one month and after you are in a hurry because you are not comfortable on this. You must look first inside yourself, see what is your pleasure and photograph inside your place. In this moment, you can hold long term. You, to impose you in stories, you cannot, uh, you cannot hold longer in stories that are not your story. That's the point. To teach a person what to do, I cannot. It's each person that must know what they can do. Sebastian, you have had very difficult projects in your career, both physically and emotionally. I know that it was very difficult for you during and after that period. 
could you tell us what exactly what the most difficult thing in the implementation of those projects when you shoot it refugees and so many deaths every day? Well, as I said a few minutes ago, when you choose a project, you are concerned with the project. You choose because uh, you must do it, it's your story. And uh, this story do not happen in the door of your home. You must look where they are. And uh, you are you are function what is happening around you. And for example, I'm just now waiting a telephone call of my doctor because the day before yesterday, Saturday, I made uh, one magnetic resonance of my vertebral colon and uh, I have problems with the upper part of my colon. I was victim in 1974 of explosion of a car over mine, a land mine, a huge land mine against car that destroyed completely the military car that I was inside, that killed the driver, that took out the two legs of the Portuguese official that are in front of the car. Me, I was in the back, I was projected four meters out of the car. I feel something in my neck. I was young at that time, I was just 30 years old. Young is young, but the injury was there. And after years later, I start to feel my neck and now most the problem, I need uh, to do an operation. And uh, it's like it is the life. I have a lot of friends that were killed in the, doing these stories around the, the life of photographer. I must tell you, I had a big chance to be here alive speaking to you because others do not have. But uh, when you, are, uh, you choose to do photography, you, you, you have a huge privilege. You have uh, the right to go. You have the right to be there. You have the right to be in front of the history of the humanity because your life is completely integrated to the historical movement that you are living. But sometimes you pay with your body, you pay with your health, sometimes you pay with your life. And, and that it is. For a few times I was about to be killed and I had a chance. I was not killed. I'm here. But uh, I have a uh, few friends that work with me in gamma agents, for example, that were sitting beside one other inside the agents that were killed, that were no more here. You know? and, uh, and it is. It's interesting to go. It's important to go. It's your life to go. But one day, it's possible that you don't come back. But uh, if it was necessary to choose, I choose to go again. You're a great person, really. <laughs> No, I'm not a great person. Uh, photography is a way of life. That was my life. And I, I put my life. I have a lot of images. Real, I have a lot of images. But uh, I was operated two times with my, my, my knees. I was operating my Ashid tendon. I was operating my shoulder. I have a break shoulder in this side. And what you want? It's like this, you know? But... Uh, but I have the pictures. You know, when I saw for the first time your movie, The uh, Salt of the Earth, I cried one hour after <laughs> this movie. <laughs> when you when you tell about uh, all this uh, all this death, I don't know how you feel in this time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, that's the life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sebastian, uh, the compositions in your photography are incredible and uh, worthy to comparison to some of the greatest paintings in art history. In my and Alex, in our opinions, of course. In your opinion, how does a good composition differ from a bad composition? No, there is no good, there is no bad composition. There is just composition. You see, our language of photography, you are both photographers. Uh, you have uh, your way to write in photography. You have uh, your heritage, your cultural heritage. 
your uh, historical heritage, your family heritage, and all these made uh, a personality, made a way to, to see. And uh, our language, yours, mine, is a completely statical language. We write uh, with uh, light, we write uh, with uh, shadows, we write uh, with uh, plans, composition, lines, and uh, in a fraction of a second. You must organize all this. All this is quite well organized. And uh, it's instinctive, it's instinctive. And uh, each one has his own. Some ones are more uh, easy to understand, others more difficult to understand, but they're all languages, they're all compositions, all have one reason to exist. And, uh, but there is no one better than the other. They are all languages of photography, is the uh, but Sebastian, did you uh, learn somehow the composition, the, the, the language of the light, the language of the form, the language of art of photography? Did you learn it somehow? No, I never went to any school. I, I never had the opportunity to go to an art school, to a school of photography. And... Uh, that is a, would be a huge privilege, but I had no time for this. And, uh, but in reality, we don't need, we don't need it because uh, uh, there is few equilibrium, there is few organization of space that are, are instinctive you know that uh, in a longer horizontal line system, you cannot walk in vertical. You know that when you have one diagonal line, that diagonal line creates a huge dynamic inside the picture. And this, same if you don't went to school, immediately you see that that works like that. That don't work in another way. And, uh, and in the end, when you go to a museum, you look at these huge painters, this guy that really had uh, six months, one year to prepare one frame. And uh, they do not do different that you do. No, there is one instinct of the composition. And uh, I had a big privilege to use the light in a way, but was completely instinctive. I came from a tropical country with the very hard sun and uh, I was very clear skin, and uh, the sun burned me a lot, endured my face when I was a, a kid. My mother put me always a huge hat in my head. I was always in the shadow. And everyone that comes to order me was come from the light to the shadow. And I learned from baby to, to look from dark to the light. And, uh, when you look at majority of my pictures, they are photographed against the light. And uh, from kid, I learned to see against the light. And uh, instinctively, I transmitted this to photography. Once, many years ago, I was in Cuba. Uh, I was photographing in Cuba. And my wife had designed a show that was in the Fine Art Music Museum in Havana. And a weekend, I came to Havana and I went to see how I was working my exhibition there. Arrived there, I saw come inside the exhibition a class, a teacher of the School of Bozar of uh, Fine Art. And the teacher tell to the, stu the students, look guys, this photographer Everything that he does is against the light. I said, oh, it's true. Everything I start to see my things were all against the light. I discovered in this moment that I was photographing all my life long against the light. And after I started to mind, why? And I discovered why, because uh, that is part of my origin. That's part of my history. But other photographers not. I had a very good uh, 
photographer here in France that is dead and now called Robert Doano. Robert Doano was one of the biggest photographer ever in the story of photography. He never photographed against the light. See, he comes from a counter, uh, north count, France, soft lights, like you guys in Ukraine, the light in Ukraine is, wow, it's the paradise of light. And it was necessary to him to do any kind of artifice to look, to adapt his eyes. And you see, his photography is much more harmonious than the mine, much more soft. And it's each one of us is one different history, different way to, to do intervention in the nature. And that's like me. Sebastian, tell me please, when do you think a photographer should use medium format? You see, I, I can tell my, why myself I use medium format. Normally, medium format is a camera made to produce high quality negatives or high quality archives because uh, the size of, uh, in the times of film, the negative was much bigger. And today, the size of the, the, the sensor is much bigger that gives you much more definition. It's in function of you need, if you need, uh, uh, to portraits that you have time to put a camera in a tripod and uh, to make a shot, wait a little bit, do another. But if uh, you are working in stories happening in front of you quickly in the street, uh, some action, some people running, that you be, be back to the people, you cannot work with a medium format camera. Most today, because uh, uh, these archives are very heavy. A camera made a picture take a few seconds to take a second one, and you lose the second one. And uh, that is the big advantage to work in 35 millimeter cameras because you can make uh, a lot of pictures one back to the other. And, uh, and me, I work in a mountain a medium format because uh, I suppose to do one story with better quality. Uh, and the films in this moment was losing the quality. Uh, the film companies took out the silver from the films. Mm -hmm. And the base leaving, uh, taking out the, the base silver from the films, uh, we lose quality in the films. We had not more beautiful tones of grays and the film become uh, very grainy. And uh, the only way that I had to, to have uh, the same quality that I had uh, before was to use a medium format. I use a medium format. But after that, I came to digital. Today, I have uh, my camera that I use now, Canon R5, is 45 million pixels. It's, well, boy, it's amazing. With, uh, I, I photograph all Amazonia with the Canon DX, that's 21 million pixels. Now I have 45, if it's 21 million pixels, I can do enlargement of two meters, three meters long with a high quality. And today we fought five millions and I have a 45 millimeter camera, a 35 millimeter camera. That's a very fast camera, very easy to use. I can have two cameras completely adapted to my hand. And a medium format, it's much more heavy, much more slowly. And uh, it's see, it's depend your need. You adapt the camera in function of your need, not uh, you adapt your photography in function of the camera. It's the camera that uh, made it the function of, uh, uh, for, of your needs. Sebastian, so, from your personal experience, could you describe what a, what a person needs to do in order to keep the fire and passion for the business you are doing all your life? You see, I teach with my wife, Lelia, in the big school of photography of Japan. We are in Tokyo, teach for 15 years there. Not every time there, we came twice a year, once a year. We have a school that, uh, a class that we have. And it was very easy to see that inside a class of 30 guys, we had one or two photographers. The others not, they were not photographers. And uh, that's the point. There is a lot of photographers that believe that they are photographers, but they are not. To be a photographer, you must be real uh, in love, in total love of photography. You must leave photography from the morning to the evening. Photography must be your passion. 
And uh, after that, you are real like this, you must choose uh, the stories that are your stories, as I said to you a few minutes ago. And uh, you see, that's the point. You must uh, really see if you are a photographer or if you are a doctor or if you are an engineer. Probably you made a wrong option. If you made the good option, you must see inside it. You are, yes, you are a photographer. Now you must see what real you love, what real like to make photography. I saw a lot of guys that cannot photograph a human being because they are shy. They are afraid to come to a person. You cannot do photography of humans in this condition. You must uh, do photography of landscape. You must uh, do spots. You must do other things. But uh, if you come to people, you must love people. You must be comfortable to photograph people. And uh, that, that's the point. And nothing else more than this. You see, you cannot, there is no rules. There is no imposition. There is love. Or you love what you are doing, or you cannot do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the last, and the last questions. Let's imagine that uh, I'm your student as a photographer. What are the very first important things uh, you would explain to me about photography? What should I know at the very beginning? No, photography is not a secret. Photography. You work with a camera. You must learn your camera. After that, you use a lot of your camera. Your camera becomes continuation of your eyes, continuation of your hand. is is not more a variable. It started to be a constant. That means it's something done. You don't care about my scan. You work with a sensibility. You are adapted to it. You work with. You are comfortable with. That's it. No. You, you like printing a certain way, you print a certain way. After that, we start to print. You believe that is this, you are in peace, is this way. That means the act to capture the photography, the act to deal with a camera, this, if you insist, you get this. It's become automatic, you, you don't care. The, the only problem, the only problem is to see if you really like photography, if it's real, your story. And I cannot tell from here other things than the photographer that does exactly what I do. I do social photography. I do environmental photography. I do human photography. For these photographers, I can say something. I can say nothing for the guy that does portrait, that does uh, uh, other kind of photography because uh, I don't know this other kind of photography. But the photographer that does human photography, that do social photography, environmental photography, after the moment that discover that they are real photographer, I'll ask them to stop a little bit, to stop for two or three years, that go to the university and learn a little bit of sociology, of anthropology, of geopolitics, of history of geography in order to situate himself inside the society that he, he is part of it, to understand his society, to understand the world. In this moment that we start to understand that you have few tools, you put your photography and in this moment you are in total coherence with the, the the society that you are part of it. And that is this, photography is just a mirror of the society. This kind of photography that I'm gonna say is not thing else more than this. And uh, your photographies must represent this society, must be real, be the mirror of the society.